Hi, this is Joe Nimzora. I'm just making this little video to talk about techniques of teaching ACLS in a low-tech environment. I teach nursing at the University of Hawaii during the school year, but I come to Nepal to teach here, and when I do, I focus on critical care nursing skills. And I've had people email me or question, you know, how you can teach critical care uh, in a low-tech country, and it's doable. I've been doing this since 1980, on and off, and I'm old, so I remember back before we had the gazillion dollar mannequins and simulation like that. Let me show you the main tool that I use, and you may laugh when you see this, but uh, one of the things that's always been in the ACLS manual has been the idea that there are actually only six basic heart rhythms. Now, there are going to be purists who think, oh, gee, I spent a lot of time learning ECG, and it's much more complicated that than that. That can't possibly be true. This has actually been true in the Heart Association manual for decades. And I will say this, no matter how qualified you think you are, I'm more qualified than you, and this is true. But so there, what I did have done is I make sets of these cards. Actually, I, with me here in... Kathmandu, I have two of these things, which are the um, AT35 uh, heart monitor simulators from Pinnacle Technologies, and it's a great little tool. Elsewhere, you can find their address on the web, but if they have an actual, if the place I'm going actually has an ECG monitor defibrillator, we bring these two things and we use these. But when you don't have one, or if you're just trying to do like group study on your own, you can make this set of laminated cards similar to what I have and use these. So it's like, first one is present. Uh, actually, let's go back. First one, I'm sorry. First one is too slow. Next one is present. Next one is too fast, which is actually narrow complex SVP. Next one is ventricular fibrillation ventricular tachycardia, and then finally a systole. Um, here in Nepal, I because I have, when we break up into smaller groups, I have more than one set of them, and they're all color-coded to have people lead each group. But typically the way that happens is you can do this in lieu of pushing the buttons on some fancy simulator or needing a laptop. What I do is, you know, we give them this scenario and we say, okay, start off with a person in V-fib. Okay, start off doing BLS, and then you go say, when you hook up the monitor, this is the rhythm we have. Then, you know, the group is expected to verbalize or pretend to defibrillate the person, and then maybe they go back into sinus rhythm, so you hold it up. And, and they're expected to actually look at what the rhythm is now and base their decisions on what the rhythm is. A lot of megacode, a lot of scenario-based education is responding fluidly to changes in rhythm that occur when changes in therapy have taken place. And what happens is the team has to all learn how to cue on the same rhythm simultaneously so that when they're um, using the protocol, they can switch back and forth mentally through the various pages of the protocol that they've memorized to know where they are. And like, for example, you know, a person comes in with chest pain and they're having bradycardia, so we treat them with atropine. A few minutes later, it's better, pulse is better. Then maybe it goes slow again and they have to get atropine and then it's better. Then maybe they need a third dose of atropine and then that improves, or else suddenly the person goes unconscious and goes into V-fib. What do we do then? And that kind of thing. I could do this more fancy and have more than six cards, but I don't. Um, this is actually a good way to get people to learn how to be fluid in what it is. And a lot of the ACLS thing is this intellectual exercise in which, yeah, it's nice if you have better simulation and you feel more comfortable in the environment, but it's also the idea of which 
what the rhythm indicates on protocol, and if all you know is the rate and the six rhythms, you can get a very far distance away. If you make your own cards, make sure you put the hash marks up on top so that people can estimate the rate of the rhythm. Anyway, this is kind of the tip for the day. This, uh, you know, this simulator here cost uh, $350 a piece with the discount. The, this simulator here costs 80, 80, 80 rupees, which is less than a dollar to get the entire set laminated. And laminating them is actually worthwhile. And then because they're different colors, when I have more than one person going there, uh, they pick the whichever color they've been using. Um, I'll do another one on this subject, I suppose, later. But in the meantime, just enjoy this and have a great day. Bye. Oh, and the other thing is you can go to my web page, the fan, book, fan page for the summer course, and just even Google my name, Joe Nimzer, you'll find all kinds of stuff.